you want some rice? I wasn't asking you, I know you want rice. Do you, do you want rice? Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today is another kitchen vlog of just a bunch of clips of things that I have been cooking. Granted, I'm, this was it at the end of 2023 and it is well into 2024 now, but as many of you know, I've been sort of like battling this really long bout of burnout. It honestly feels like it's been like two years running where I slightly come out of burnout and then I'm able to work again, and then I'm right back into the thick of burnout. And it's really frustrating because as a creative, being burnt out means that even when I sit down to do work, absolutely nothing comes out, or if something does come out, it is just garbage. That is why there's been a dip in content coming out lately. And I've been trying to like do different things to like help with the burnout before, if I would just take like a couple days off, I would be fine and I'd be back at work again. But I think because um, my cup is being poured into things like keeping my toddler alive or, you know, managing house stuff or drama or any of that kind of stuff, like my cup is, is constantly getting emptied by things that are not um, my work, which is really frustrating because I, I do really need to work. I know that this is a temporary season of life and that, you know, Bean won't always be this small and demanding and we're entering what I'm trying to reframe as the terrific twos and not the terrible twos because like, I'm just, I'm having a really hard time. But at the same time, it is an incredible time with Bean. Bean is like learning so much more. They're capable of so much more, which is like really cool to see, but they're also having, you know, like tantrums. They're having like really hard times um, at times with like, they're just dysregulated or, you know, they're tired and they're, they don't really have the, the tools to like explain why they're feeling the way that they're feeling so then they just melt down and then I get dysregulated and then I'm trying to like stay regulated while also trying to help them co-regulate it's it's a whole thing so by the end of the day when they go down for bed at 8 30 or 8 8 30 um I'm just completely burnt out just like I, I don't know, I've got nothing. Anyway, thankfully I have a bunch of clips. I have like four videos I need to edit. Plus I have, I don't know if you remember, but when I was pregnant with Bean, I went on that East Coast trip and I still have two more vlogs that I need to edit. And I'm like, is it too late? Do I even put those out now? Like, is, do, is there even a point? I haven't quite figured out what to do with those, but like some of them are like pretty fun or interesting vlogs. So I feel like I should, but anyway, uh, <laughs> We're, we're here editing stuff from last year, making different things. I'll put like the titles of like what I'm cooking on um, the video. And if there's recipes for them, I will put them out. But for most of these, I'm just sort of like, I'm just vibing. Like there was one day, one of my friends, um, she mentioned that she finally got to try Penny Pudi or Golgapa. Um, I don't know how to actually pronounce it. So I apologize if I completely butchered those uh, pronunciations, but she had never heard of it until she saw me post about it. And so I was like, yeah, I want that. But ever since I moved here to Waterloo, I don't really know where decent takeout is for Indian food and specifically like street food like this. So um, if you have any suggestions, I would love to know. Granted, I made like a lot of it for like, I think a serving of it is normally like $9 at the restaurants that I go to. And I think the entire clamshell of the shells were, I think it was like $6. And then it was like potatoes, chickpeas, cilantro, and a bunch of spices and onion that I already have. I think I spent like probably $9 to make like 20 times the amount of a penny pudi that you would normally get at a restaurant. So maybe I just make it instead of ordering it out. I don't know. I think the tricky thing is I don't really know how to make the mint water. So I use the packet that it came with because I don't have um, amateur powder or asafoetida or so there's some other things that I didn't have. But anyway, it, it came with like a little like packet of the instant water thing to dip it in. So that's fine. And I also have the tamarind uh, sauce. Anyway, this was like super easy. I think I followed a specific recipe for this. So if I can remember which one it was, I can link it down below. Um, but yeah, like 10 out of 10 recommend making this yourself. Bean didn't love this. I mean, they liked moments of it. They really liked eating the, the shells, but they didn't like the texture of like the potatoes. Now that you think about it, I don't think they like potatoes that much. They like French fries. They like potatoes if they have a texture to them, but if it's just like a boiled mushy potato, like they don't really like mashed potatoes either. Although they did like licking it off the spoon. So I think it needs to have like a firm like texture to counterbalance the softness or just a very firm utensil i'm not really sure bean is by all accounts not a picky eater um but there's some things with textures that they just like super can't get behind so they just immediately like return to sender um and eddie's the same so i feel like they have very similar palettes in that sort of way although like bean loves mushrooms and kimchi so i think they have a mix of what eddie and i prefer but there's some textures where if it's just super mushy they're not really into it like they don't like congee either which is kind of a bummer 
because kanji is like one of my favorite things to eat especially when i'm sick and thankfully bean really likes soup so whenever i make like chickpea noodle soup they don't really love the chickpeas actually so i've, I've been replacing it with tofu instead but they do really like tofu noodle soup um and they love the broth from that especially if i have like a lot of carrots and celery they love carrots i think the other day when we went to go visit my mom they were having hot pot for dinner and i think because my mom knows that Bean likes carrots, my mom left all the carrots in the pot for Bean. And I think Bean legitimately ate like an entire carrot. I mean, I guess that's good because like it's good for your eyes. And like, I'm pretty sure Bean has my eyes, which does not bode well, but uh, <laughs> you know, so, so my eyes are healthy. They're just not very good at seeing. So yeah. You know, this meal was overall a bust. They don't really like chickpeas, they don't like potatoes, but they did like these crunchy shells. But you know, sometimes that's life. You're not gonna always like what you get offered right is this still one of my favorite indian dishes to try and make and eat yes absolutely will i make again probably will bean try it in the future who knows maybe with more exposure they'll be into it i've been posting a bunch of these like set it and forget it type recipes on my instagram and my tiktok um i should post them on youtube shorts but the annoying thing about youtube shorts is that they only let you do 60 seconds and sometimes with reels you can do 90 seconds and with tiktok you can do up to three minutes so i sometimes i just like the, the slightly longer form content but if it's like too short like a minute like it's just like i can't get all the stuff that i want in it i made this recipe for via life on instagram and this was actually i think one of the best risottos i've ever made it was so so good bean wasn't super into it because of the texture but like everyone else who had this said it was really good so you know it's also super easy because you just make risotto in your instant pot there's very little stirring it's incredible and it's so cheesy and so good so if you like risotto 10 out of 10 recommend this i think this is like one of my best recipes from that series because it was so good but of course when i made it i forgot that i didn't have um arborio rice and i used what i thought was arborio rice but was actually sticky rice instead so it had like a sweet flavor to it which was like it was fine the texture was fine but it was just like weird to me not my best work the recipe follow it and use arborio rice, it'll be much better. Uh, and yeah, and I served it with barbecue soy curls because protein. Uh, and yeah, that I, honestly, really, really good. I'll leave the link for this recipe down below. I have a couple other rice recipes for set it and forget it um, because I find rice and like other grains like rice, like quinoa or whatever, are the easiest to set and forget in that kind of thing, especially in a rice cooker. But I've been wanting to do pasta ones because I know a lot of people do like dump and bakes for pasta in the oven, but I don't want to do the oven because I want to be able to leave the house. So I want to put it in something like an instant pot and I'm sure there's a way that I could do that. I think the hard thing is with these sort of recipes, if I'm just like working with like a new concept, I am afraid of wasting ingredients if the recipe doesn't turn out well because in this economy right now wasted food for one i can't really afford it and two it just feels kind of criminal because of how expensive food is these days so i think that's just the difficult part of experimenting with new recipes but ideally i experiment with them and then that keeps you from wasting your ingredients as well so anyway it's a process but uh next we're making i think i was craving like ricotta mushroom toast i've been seeing all these like cottage cheese toasts um i was really craving mushroom and ricotta and obviously because i want it to be protein and iron rich for both me and bean i was using tofu and bean really liked this tofu stuff it was yeah they were super into it they do like mushy tofu but they don't like potatoes i don't know make it make sense sometimes trying to decipher what bean likes and what bean doesn't like like it changes on the day and like things that they used to love months ago like tempeh they would eat tempeh like without any problem and then I think I took a break for like two weeks and then now they don't like tempeh anymore and I'm like well that's really unfortunate because that was a really good source of plant-based protein that uh we were liking you want to try some again Wow, I filmed this like probably three months ago and I haven't had a chance to edit it until now, but even Bean's language skills have completely changed since this video. And so any of the clips that I'm I'm hearing that I hear Bean's voice in, like they used to say B as more because they would hear me say more please. And so they just stuck on please. So they would just say B, but now they say more. For the past couple months, they have been overemphasizing the R sound in words. So car would be Kara, more would be Mora or Stara for star. And Eddie's like, how do we fix that? <laughs> and I just said that it would just take time but beans language skills have honestly been so impressive and I am surprised every day when they like just randomly fix their like really cute toddlerisms um so like bef 
before they would say b b or whatever and it'd be really cute and now and like i don't even remember the last time they said b and i think that's like the most like bittersweet part about parenting is that like you don't know when the last time is going to be until you think back and you're like wait when was the last time and now i don't really remember oh i just really got in my feelings there <clears throat> anyway uh so this bread ricotta toast i don't know if you can tell i use cranberry bread for this because when i saw this bread in the stores i hadn't intended to use it for ricotta toast i just wanted to eat the bread because it brought me back to when i lived in france for a couple months uh when i was like 14 i did an exchange and my french parents would buy this bread that was like full of nuts and seeds and dried fruit and it was so good and anyway i saw this bread at walmart and i was like wow I want to eat that but it was a really weird combo with savory ricotta toast so i don't recommend that but on its own it was actually pretty good so if you want the recipe for the ricotta it's actually the same sort of recipe that i used for my vegan lasagna i should probably just make a separate breakout recipe for the ricotta itself but if you want that i'll link it down below it's in the lasagna recipe so we're back to making uh set it and forget it type recipes when i was testing it i was most successful just using rice and tofu in the dish but then i needed to have a veggie as well so i started trying to think of like different veggies to put put in this but they would always overcook because I'd be gone for like two hours but I don't know if you can see here but I'm saving the rice water and I've been using it to water my plants and one it's like reducing waste but two my plants have been loving it um, I don't know if you can tell but they're super lush the only thing is is that I think I have gnats or fruit flies now because of it but I've just chosen to largely ignore the issue so you know do with that information what you will <laughs> also you can use that rice water I think to as like a toner you put it in the fridge and like I think it's good for like a week or whatever and you just spritz it on your face and it's free skincare but yeah i tried using broccoli on top and the flavor i think was good i think the combo of it worked really well but the texture and the color was not super great but this jar of Heine's chicken rice paste has been so handy in this house it makes this rice so so tasty the thing is it's kind of hard to find and even at my local TNT's I've noticed that it is like out of stock a lot which is really frustrating so I need to try making my own but I would have to like puree lemongrass galangal onion a couple other things ginger as well and I tried like finding those things pre minced or like pre pureed uh, and a lot of times they have like milk products them, which is kind of a bummer. I have been meaning to make it like a regular because this is based on like Heine's chicken rice. A lot of people just make that from scratch, right? And I'm like, well, I could probably do that, but I haven't done it yet because this is one of those meals that I just throw into the rice cooker before I go to the gym and I just haven't gotten around to testing the, the recipe from scratch yet. But anyway, that is in the pipeline and if you can find this like 10 out of 10 recommend adding it to your rice. It is so, so good. Um, and I also tried a version with Napa cabbage on top and I think I really like that but again it was like really soft i think it just needs a green that has slightly more bite like maybe like blanched gailang or yu choy i don't know typically it's served i think with cucumbers and tomatoes but bean doesn't like either of those things so i'm trying to offer food that they will eat and they do like broccoli most days not every day i i don't know like if you have a toddler like you you know the struggle some days they might love the food some days they hate the food that used to be their favorite thing ever so that is the struggle that i'm currently at but for the most part they like they like most foods and like if i'm eating it and they especially like asian flavors and sort of foods like they love soup they love the gun that i usually have with rice i'm just really grateful that they will eat most foods and even if the vegetable intake is not as ideal as i would like they do love fruit so you know i'll take it do you want some rice And for the last recipe, I am making a tuna casserole and I've been making this dish on and off for a couple months and I keep meaning to like finalize the recipe and then post it on my site. And I do have a version of it with chickpeas and that one is really good, but this is like creamier and more decadent, especially because I found a tuna product that is actually like quite like tuna that isn't beans. And it is the Gusta tuna and it's in like the refrigerate section. I, mo I usually find it at Sobeys, but it's a Canadian company. So I don't think my American viewers or obviously international, anyone else of Canada basically I don't think you can find it but I don't know if anyone remembers the safe catch foods the one that was like in a packet it's like in like a, a sachet sachet oh my god I just like super struggled there if you took the texture of that which is kind of like firm play-doh and the texture of the garden fishless fillets and that came together it is I think the most realistic vegan tuna there is right now I really like the omni pork one but it is expensive. Whereas the Gusta tuna, I think is like $7 um, for like 
280 grams, I think. It's like really, really decently priced and really tasty. Also very high in protein and I like it a lot. I like it for tuna melts. I like it for tuna salad, obviously tuna casserole. And in previous renditions of this, I've added the tuna to this pot of like sauce so it like kind of cooks down a little bit first and bean really liked it when i did it in the sauce first but for this version i didn't cook it except for baking it in the oven so it just kind of like got heated through bean didn't like it as much because it's like a bit firmer textured so do with that information what you will i love this product honestly like if this is the only only tuna product i have for the rest of my life i'd be fine i will say it gives you protein farts <laughs> Like, like protein powder, like if, if you're not used to having protein powder, when you increase your protein intake, you get pretty powerful farts. And these are the stinkiest farts. They're really, really good though. Like again, this product, 10 out of 10, like so, so, so good. Very decently priced. Anyway, I will eventually post a recipe for this. Actually, I should test it again soon because you know what? I'm kind of craving it, but Bean likes it. Eddie loves it. Eddie's family loved it when I made it for Bean's birthday last year. I've used different kinds of noodles. I've tried fettuccine. I've tried linguine. I've tried these like little bow pastas and I've tried, I think macaroni, I think. I can't remember. There was like another, another shape. The most successful was the fettuccine um, because it's the most like egg noodles but there's no vegan version of an egg noodle and i think that is like the top tier option that i would choose in terms of pasta so i mean despite the protein farts the gusta product is so so good and i've probably bought like 12 packets of it at this point because like we love eating it in this house here do you want to help mama spread this yeah you can use a spoon and we'll spread this around. Like this. Oh, don't dig into it. You spread it around. Spread the top around. See, like this. Do it. You've used that spoon. Don't dig it. No, di don't scoop. Okay, this is this is not the fun educational moment I thought it would be. No scooping. Just spreading around. See, just spread. Just like yeah, tap tap on top. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. All done. All done? Okay. Good, because I gotta bake it in. As you can see, parenthood is very hands-on for me right now and it takes a lot of my energy and I don't know how people do this and also do other stuff. Like I, I don't know how you do that. I, That's a lot of energy. Anyway, I have more content to post and a lot of it is on Instagram and TikTok because it doesn't take me as long to edit. So if you are missing my content, I am there, especially in stories on Instagram. There's more YouTube videos coming. I'm cooking all the time anyway. So like, you know, I'll just turn on the camera and then you'll get stuff like this. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a delicious day.